Starting off with something super, super awesome, dog signal. <laughs> so basically, this dude got his dog from his ex because his ex didn't want to take the dog back. So now he has to take care of it. He's struggling. But then a dog trainer comes and helps him. And it's really educational. It's very comedic. It's really good. The only issue is it's not available. No streaming services picked it up. And this is the only Jose anime of this season. So I don't know why. A lot of people may not know this, but it's only available on France TV and Japan NHK. It doesn't look bad, so I just hope it gets licensed soon. The Saints Magic Power is omnipotent, is back with a second season, and I am so sad that not a lot of people know about this anime. Go watch it, please, please. I need somebody to talk to about it. Look at all these men, okay? Green flags everywhere except for him it's a romance fantasy isekai that follows say a 20 year old office worker who was summoned to a new world as a saint to save the world but another summoned girl is preferred over her since they thought she had no magic or so they thought hey i watched season one and adored it even though the pacing was a little slow to my taste i enjoyed it nonetheless so if you want to watch something peaceful and warm this is for you what happened with good morning? What happened to hi? How are you? Arguably the gayest and not gayest anime of the season, My Boss is Goofy, is a comedy anime featuring Momose, a 26-year-old office worker who recently changed jobs after being harassed by his former boss, um, and basically he tries to hide his concern about facing a similar situation with his new boss. I'm very normal about these two. <laughs> Why are you gay? Enemies to lovers but make it. A lot of people are saying that this is a perfect adaptation from the light novel, so I'm looking forward to watching even more of it. I'm in love with the villainess is at least so funny so far, and the best part is the romance is not fetishized. Just groundbreaking for the anime community. So you go, Ashinebe. What happens when magical girls grow up? Pure is also back, but they're now adults. Yep, you heard that right. It's not magical girls. It's a magical woman. They got big girl jobs. They go out and get drunk and talk about the imposter syndrome that you're feeling and how things are much more harder than it was before. And you watch them try to let go of their immature tendencies and learn what it's like being an adult. <laughs> I personally never watched Peak Cure as a kid, but I can definitely tell this is done well, even without the nostalgia. The Four Brothers of Yuzuki is an anime about four brothers who try to navigate their day to day lives after losing both of their parents. Real sad, but that doesn't stop the anime from being wholesome and also maintaining a good balance of taking a deep dive of sibling dynamics. Expect commentary on things like the invisible middle child or the overwhelmed oldest sibling and the spoiled younger child. Kagoe Boys Sing a boys choir anime made by Universal Pictures and coming from the same director who made Brothers Conflict. It features a cast from all different walks of life and they're learning to sing, so far from what I've seen, in English. With real singing techniques and they dance too. Hey! <laughs> Paradox Live, the animation. Famously known for a rap-based musical project in Japan, Basically, a new hip-hop culture called Phantom Live exists where rappers don't just rap, but use phantom metals in their accessories to create emotion-linked illusions. But there's a side effect in using that. You get traumatized. But it's worth it because this club called Paradox is giving out 10 billion yen if you win with your phantom metal. Want another rap anime? Hypnosis Mike, another team-based rapper anime that is coming out right now with a second season. In this world, people have rap battles with hypnosis microphones that can cause physical damage with the bars that they spit out. Don't want rap? There is the usual idol anime airing. B Project is airing a third season um, which features five idol units who are managed by the MC. Poor MC is getting overworked. 
Holy. A girl and her guard dog. Okay, so this girl has been sheltered all her life. Her parents were killed and she was taken care by this dude since she was five because he was hired by her grandpa who was part of the yakuza so that makes him part of the yakuza too and wow he becomes her teacher um maybe that's yeah no no he's doing his job he's doing his job um oh i wonder how their relationship will develop <laughs> So, if you don't know the existence of this anime, you haven't seen this certain screenshot from the manga. Age gaps, especially in shoujo, have been normalized in the community. Okay, ignoring the age gap and the grooming, his personality alone can get him arrested. Put this man in jail, but the fact is, this manga was picked up instead of other manga titles. Uh, the last time he had a shoujo anime picked up from this magazine was Kiss Him and Not Me. And so I understand the disappointment from the general public who wanted other non-taboo shoujo mangas to be adapted instead. I mean, understandable, we don't really get a lot of choices to pick every season compared to shonen fans, so why not prioritize shows that aren't taboo media. At the end of the day, obviously those who watch it are people that indulge in taboo fiction and know it's fiction and those who are uncomfortable won't. This <laughs> I love MC for this show. She is snarky, clever, funny, and a dork about medicine and poison and drugs. Oh my god, I, you love to see it. You love to see a girl in STEM. Anyways, made by Toho Animation, this stunning show follows Mao Mao, who goes from an apothecary's daughter to a servant in the emperor's palace after getting kidnapped. There she gains recognition by solving medical mysteries, catching the eye of Jinshi, a handsome palace official. There is no romance between the male and female, and just banter and gags between them. So far, from what I can tell. Its sole focus is on Mao Mao and her geeking out on poison and making drugs. Really fun to watch, and not to mention the OP is a banger. This is the most hyped anime of the season, a heartbreaking show of the fall season under director Kishiro Saito, who made Bochi the Rock, is going for his second anime of the year. The anime picks up years later after the Demon King is defeated, and so you follow this elven mage with a long lifespan, and she stumbles her way through grief and self-discovery. By picking up some odd quests to go on and help others in exchange for a place to stay, some money, and sometimes fun and useless odd, long forgotten spells. It has a unique premise and it has really well written characters. Explore how a long life is both a blessing and a curse with Fridian. Do you guys remember? Um, that one anime called The Millionaire Detective or something like that. It's basically that, but nobody's rich and the detective is depressed. And the other guy's useless and broke. Or not broke, maybe he's just normal. The cases there are really intriguing, really heavy on the crime and... Ooh. Quick mentions, Ancient Magus Bride is coming back with a season 2 part 2. Spy Family is coming back with season 2. After School, Hana Kokun has a spin-off with a new studio. And Tear Moon Empire is basically Marie Antoinette, the anime villainous redemption arc. Are you talking about Marie Antoinette? Instead of Trap Goon, we have Guillotine Goon. What anime are you checking out this season? What do you hate or love? Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next season. Bye-bye!